Disruptive innovation, something that creates a new market that eventually goes on to disrupt an existing market. In this second episode of TV Wars, let's see how Google plans to disrupt and take over the television with the help of a dongle, the Google Chromecast. Way back in February, I launched the first episode of TV Wars to see if you subscribers would like a series focused on the platform innovations happening with media devices and digital platforms targeting the television. The way many of us consume video has fundamentally changed. While movie ticket revenue remains stable, optical disc revenue is collapsing while digital media is taking off. As a side note, Sony and Panasonic are developing a successor to Blu-ray capable of storing 300 gigs of data, which is great if 4K TV ever becomes a thing. But taking over the TV is not an easy thing to do, especially when an entire media industry is fighting tooth and nail to stay in control. Many of us are hooked on content produced, distributed, and controlled by traditional TV networks. So younger Silicon Valley platform owners have been trying really hard to get access to traditional TV content. Intel reportedly offered to pay 75% more than traditional cable rates in order to get access to TV content controlled by these networks. Rumor has it Apple has been working on technology that not only skips commercials, but pays TV networks for these skipped views. But despite all these money offers, executives in the television industry are reluctant to give tech companies more influence, especially after watching the music industry fall to its knees as new platforms have won the hearts, minds, and wallets of digital consumers like us. TV and cable executives want to keep the two worlds separate, divide and conquer. They want the things we watch on our TVs to be different from the things we watch on tablets, smartphones, and computers. But is there really a difference between the big screen in the living room and the small screens in our pockets? Google is breaking down the barriers with the help of a dongle. Let's break it down. But first, the model number, H2G2, a common abbreviation for this fictional masterpiece of nerdiness. The answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything is Forty-two. Forty-two? Yes, yes, I thought it over quite thoroughly. The full model is H2G2-42. I highly recommend the book. So Google's latest innovation hopes to help solve life, the universe, and everything by bringing Google to the living room. Now the premise behind the product. The Chromecast is a cheap way for the internet to take over your television. Or in the words of Google, it brings online entertainment to your HDTV for about the cost of a couple Blu-ray movies. In terms of hardware, it's surprisingly simple. It's just an HDMI dongle powered by a stripped down version of the Google TV operating system. Its sole purpose is to stream content. But like many things that Google does, all the magic happens on their servers. The TV becomes a client for their network services. At launch, the Chromecast is a portal for bringing Netflix, YouTube, Google Play, and Chrome to the TV, with Vimeo, Redbox, and Plex in development. So now, instead of broadcast or cable companies controlling what we can watch on TV, Google made a cheap and easy way for developers to use their new API to pipe their content into the living room. Chromecast requires two things to work. First, the right devices must be connected to the same Wi-Fi network as the Chromecast. And second, you need to subscribe to an online service like Netflix and of course YouTube. And don't forget this channel. Once you have these devices and services, Chromecast enables users to browse, build playlists, control playback, and even adjust the volume for online video streaming to the TV. The actual setup is simple, especially compared to setting up a media server. Plug Chromecast into an HDMI port. If you have a newer TV that has a free USB port to supply power, you're good to go. Otherwise, the Chromecast comes with a power supply that can be plugged into an electrical outlet. Next, set it up with your Wi-Fi network by configuring it through the Chrome browser on your computer. Download the Google Cast Chrome extension to your PC browser, then start using it. But how does it work? For video output, the Chromecast can handle decoding 1080p video with the help of an aluminum heatsink to help dissipate the heat from all this computational power. For wireless, it runs on 2.4 GHz 802.11n and has Bluetooth 3.0. From iFixit's teardown, we learned that it has a Marvel system on a chip, 2 GB of storage for the operating system, and half a gig of low-power DDR3 RAM. Without further details, the Chromecast seems to be as powerful as a four-year-old smartphone, which is really impressive considering it's just a $35 piece of hardware. But unlike Apple's AirPlay, it uses the cloud to access your content. This interesting design choice does a few things. It preserves the battery on your mobile device. 
Since the media is streaming directly from the internet and decoding on the Chromecast, your phone or tablet can be used for other things like checking email or browsing Twitter. But as with all first-generation products, there are some limitations. The volume control is limited by the overall volume of your TV home theater setup. So if your TV volume is initially low, the Chromecast volume will max out at that volume setting. So to make it louder, you'll have to whip out the TV remote. Also, if you stream the Chrome browser that's running on a laptop, the heavy lifting of decoding video will actually drain the power of your laptop quicker. And the same issues that plague online video, like buffering and lagging, will still be a problem, especially if your broadband speeds or Wi-Fi connections are weak. But the Chromecast is just the tip of a potentially massive iceberg. Not only is it surprisingly small, with automatic updates and a developer API, the Chromecast platform has the potential to support all kinds of future innovations and applications. Google is definitely in this for the long haul. Compared to Recent attempts by Sony, Microsoft, Apple, and Intel to take over the living room. I believe Google has made the most disruptive TV product so far. While it won't immediately displace an existing Roku, Apple TV, or Blu-ray player with streaming capabilities, the Chromecast is perfect for someone who wants to find out what streaming is all about, or for someone who wants a cheap way to add streaming to their second and third TVs. And as app developers begin to figure out how best to implement the software development kit, the Chromecast has the potential to become a required living room accessory. The big question that TV industry executives should be asking themselves is, will the Chromecast be the first mass market device that enables the internet to finally take over the living room? And if so, how might this new value network of online video disrupt the traditional value network of cable TV? As more and more people find online video services good enough, will they start to cut cable to save money. I know I will. If you'd like to support the channel and order the Chromecast, check the Amazon links below to make sure you're getting the best deal. And now's the time where I personally thank all the most recent subscribers. Welcome to this channel, a place where I try my best to share my ideas and opinions about innovative things that might one day qualify to be our next digital appliances. I always read every single comment, and thanks in advance for liking and sharing these videos on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and Reddit. They definitely take a lot of work, especially the research. But your feedback keeps me going, boosts the search rankings on YouTube, and helps me plan out future episodes. If you really liked this video, click these squares from your computer, or check the links below to watch other episodes. I plan on going over the second generation Nexus 7 tablet, the upcoming Moto X launch, and continuing Phone Wars with the second episode of Network Wars, comparing the performance of the major US carriers. Oh, and before I forget, I was wondering, are any of you watching these videos from a Chromecast? Let me know if you like it.